Good morning and welcome to Empowerment Hour here at Callan FM. How are you all today? Um, well, I came in today and thought, oh, I think it's time to sort my thermal vests out. It was so blooming cold this morning and I'm rubbing my hands here as well. So my nice little um, fingerless gloves are required until we're fully into winter. I think we've hit um, autumn well and truly now. So um, it's been a really, really, really busy time for me. As you heard uh, at the end of day's show, my son got married on Sunday. It was awesome. Absolutely awesome. All the hard work they put into all the organising. Wow. Uh, What a slick operation. And amazing gratitude to Crew Hall as well, where this event was held. They were phenomenal. There wasn't any length they wouldn't go to to support these two uh, when they got married. So it was all just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And the Goddess Collective, as I was saying again at the end of Dave's show, we now have keys to our premises, which is one room. But hey, it's a start. (laughs) <laughs> and um, it's just going to be great. So we're going to be based on Northgate Street in Chester. Uh, and how does it get any better than that? Well, here's a starter for, for 10. I've got Ben Calder with me today. Good morning. Good morning, Denise, and congratulations on uh, becoming a mother-in-law. <laughs> I know. Um, our joint friend, Jackie Jones, said to me, um, she said, you need to put Mill after your, your name and see if people ask you what it is. <laughs> Because nobody asked me what CF stands for, because I have that after my name. Huh? But that's fine. Um, so, yeah, it's all really cool. So what are you up to, Ben? I'm up to loads at the moment. I'm, I'm literally uh, just a few uh, sort of 10 days away from heading back over to Poland for uh, more of my Qigong training and assistant teaching with my brother Simon. And it's a, a really exciting one because after a, a very long summer of sending back and forth assessment videos and uh, completing written exams, I'm about to become the first ever internationally certified teacher for Life Force Qigong. Wow, so, congratulations. Uh, which is a, a pretty serious uh, undertaking. You know, my brother's been building this system for years and years and years, and uh, uh, I've been helping him and assisting him with that. And he's been putting me through the rigors of it to uh, make sure that I'm I'm worthy. Uh, you know, so there's that, that part of me that's also really grateful that having somebody who's such a great teacher and such a great mentor to turn around and say to me, you know, you work so good that now we're going to authorize that worldwide for you. So it's it's quite special for me. Ben, when he comes into the show doesn't come prepared so it's always um, we're never quite sure what's going to show up <laughs> but like you as well Denise we're, we're packed full of, uh, of all sorts of awesome fun stuff so it doesn't take much I think for either of us to spark off each other and, and find that uh, seed that we'll grow during the <laughs> no it doesn't so let's go um, back in time ever so slightly so how did your brother start doing what he's doing uh, wow, I mean that 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 is a really interesting step back in time. I mean he uh, started in in martial arts and meditation when he was actually very young, uh, and was lucky enough to uh, have one of his earliest teachers be uh, a monk who uh, a Buddhist monk who was able to share a lot of really interesting insight with with Simon and he is an incredibly sensitive empathic character and is very very aware of body mechanics body energy and and how that's either in a state of congruence and alignment and flow or it isn't and he's spent I mean, it's got to have been around 30 years at least now studying uh, in the Far East with multitude of teachers. And he, he found that, uh, you know, that there's, especially in uh, kind of traditional Eastern teaching, there's a lot of secrecy. And there is a lot of, you can only get to know the real inner secrets of an art after you've been with a teacher for an extensive amount of time. And uh, Simon found that some teachers were teaching certain things, but not others. He'd go to another teacher and they'd teach the thing that the other teacher wasn't teaching, but they wouldn't teach you something else. <laughs> and so over the years... He's Keeps a, it all mystical. Sure, it, do, it does. <laughs> sure, which in a... Which in ancient China or, or kind of in an ancient culture is kind of fine, but in our in our modern day culture, it it just doesn't seem to 
we don't bite as much as no. we used to in that way and we don't really have the time and the space to give up our lives and, and go away and study for decades with somebody. So so over the years he's studied all these different systems, techniques, all around aspects of martial arts, movement, uh, energy work, so Qigong, Tai Chi. Uh, you know, He has a, a massive in-depth knowledge in Chinese medicine and, and a whole bunch of stuff. And over the years he started to find bits that were really effective and bits that didn't seem very useful. So he started to bring together all of the congruent useful parts that were work together and seem to have a synergy. And within that, he then also started to um, understand different patterns, different flows, and, and the real key of why he was doing some of the movements. And there's this old idea that once you understand what the tool does, you drop the tool because you don't need it anymore. You've seen the door that it's it's trying to open. And he, he's brought together... Uh, an incredibly pragmatic and accessible mm-hmm. series of movements that anybody can learn, any age. And I personally have, uh, with the system, taught uh, children as young as kind of seven uh, and adults in their 80s and 90s. And we can all gain from learning these movement patterns because they're just very pragmatic ways of helping the body feel happier, healthier, softer, looser. So all of that kind of stiffness, tension, contraction that we can build up right through to the kind of the trauma that the body can hold because of uh, physical events, you know, surgeries, accidents, because of emotional events that cause that kind of contraction and tension Mm. in the system. And it will just gradually ease all of that without there having to be a lot of serious analysis. The system itself unwinds these old residual patterns patterns helps to realign and then uh, kind of reintegrate new healthy patterns and strengthen those. So how do you stop the the old patterns from once you've started the movement does it just automatically stop? Yeah so I mean it's over and again it's over a period of time sure you know uh, and one of the sayings that I love the most is that we become that which we practice the most yeah so if you want to be a good piano player playing once a week for half an hour it's going to take you decades yeah whereas if I play a little bit every day you know that tune that pattern that habit will change yeah and qigong is very much the the same in that way that what we're doing is we're continuously overlaying a pattern that is not only healthier for the body but the body enjoys it more Mm. so you know it's kind of like if we've got to do a horrible job and there's a nice treat we're always going to want to go towards the nice treat so the movements in themselves are very nourishing they help us go into our parasympathetic nerve state which is the relax restore repair state so we just feel this kind of soft warm relaxed glow and I had a a student this week message me she's she's only been training with me for a a couple of months and she said during our standing practice I feel like I'm going to fall asleep is that normal Uh, and you know so standing and wanting to fall asleep and I say well to a degree yes because your system is moving into such a deep state of relaxation that all of that kind of switched on wired you know caffeinated sugared go 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 that we're so used to in so much of our lives your brain has literally switched track and gone into the other channel which is that peace relax restore and you're doing it in a room full of people stood up you know which is a beautiful effect and so over time we're just re uh, mapping healthier happier patterns into the system and so the body just starts to work out and release the trauma Mm. and the movement in itself is it's a little bit like Uh, a clever form of physiotherapy we know that if we do the exercise that the physio gives us it retrains the pattern so qigong is kind of more enjoyable plus you get to do it in a group uh, and it doesn't seem so uh, i mean and and forgive me to every physiotherapist who hears it (laughs) but it doesn't seem so boring Uh, it's not so hard to engage with because there's a there's a purpose behind it that is holistic and my guest is Ben Calder, and we're discussing Qi Gung. Ah, uh, not done it yet, have I? No, time no. I uh, time I came to get involved. I think my body would like something like that right now, but um, that's another story. <laughs> so, <laughs> so your brother Simon's developed this yeah. uh, course. So tell us what that is for you. 
So uh, as far as it goes with me at the moment, what I do is I offer regular classes down in Shrewsbury and uh, I'm just about to start running a new class at uh, Little Ness Village Hall, which is about uh, 10 minutes outside of Shrewsbury. So that starts the 22nd of October. Uh, and and it's nice as well because my space uh, at the Centre for Integral Health in Shrewsbury, beautiful space, but it's a little bit small. Mm. So uh, And this, this term since September, uh, for the first time in kind of four years of teaching I've had to uh, insist on booking and we're selling out you know the the class is pretty much sold out into November now uh, and the workshops for that I do so I do individual day workshops the one I have coming up on Sunday sold out weeks ago uh, and we're already over half full for the December and these are day workshops that look at the change in the seasons so we're using Qigong to explore how our bodies are, are different in different seasons you know so in the summer for instance we might want more cool moist uh, kind of foods and so we have practices that have echoes of that in the winter we want more dry warm you know kind of spicy n- yeah, yeah. Sure. ginger so, and stuff like exactly, that exactly yeah mm. so instead we have practices <laughs> that will nourish the body there and and again in, in kind of Chinese medicine we look at this idea that if we if we kind of acknowledge this change in the season mm. and do something active about how we behave what our practice is then it's much easier to deal with the season because we don't feel so caught out by it so the five element days really help with that so so i'm starting new workshops and hopefully by christmas i'm going to have moved up to harden and uh i'm looking to start developing some classes up in the kind of uh harden chester north wales area because uh, i i love practicing qigong mm. it's because even when i'm teaching i'm still getting to do the practice and um you know, for anybody that hasn't uh, heard of Qigong, it's a little bit like Tai Chi. Uh, yeah. And in fact, all Tai Chi comes from Qigong as a basis. And and so you've got this image of this really nice, gentle, graceful, flowing movement. So even as I'm teaching this, it's like the most beautiful, relaxing, calming space. And no matter what kind of day I've had, when I've taught Qigong, I go home and I'm just like, ah. Yeah. And it, it's yeah. beautiful. So you've been doing this for four years did you just I mean say? I've been teaching, teaching for it. four years so, um, but I've been practicing next year uh, by this time next year it'll be 30 years goodness. since I first started practicing yeah so it, it's been a long journey so to actually get to the point where I've now got this international certification coming through as a life force Qigong instructor uh, again for me that that's a peaking achievement mm. um, so I, I've trained again like my brother with a lot of different teachers lots of different styles uh, and I, I still teach, and it's part of the, the Life Force Qigong system, some of the practices I first started when I was 15 because they're, they're so fundamental to Qigong that it, it's really useful to continue having them. And if, if you could imagine your body without this, where would it be right now? What sort of state might your body be in if you weren't doing this on a regular basis? Now, the the thing that comes to mind was the the change that I had. uh, So nearly six years ago now, I had a car crash. Mm. And one of the things that helped my rehabilitation was Qigong. And if I didn't do it, inflammation, pain, stiffness, you know, so my body just didn't function. Mentally, that made me more cranky. Yeah lowered my energy you know physically I was a lot more tired if I didn't do it and and it's a strange thing that doing this activity helps to clear a lot of the the stagnancy and congestion that can have and again work-wise I actually spend quite a lot of time sit down and and you know you've probably all heard the phrase that sitting is the new smoking and so it's important for me that I'm mobilizing my joints I'm encouraging my lymph system to move I'm encouraging my circulation I'm um, invigorating my nervous system. I'm making sure that all of my joints and my tissues are moving through their full range of movements. And that encourages my body to keep those systems running. You know, so if I don't use it, I, I find that my physical energy drops, my mental space changes... Because Qigong is is what we would class as a three-body practice. It works on the physical body, it works on the subtle emotional stuff, and it works on the causal mind stuff as well. So I can operate with more clarity, my emotions are in better check, my physical body feels better. For me, it's just a a, a great catch-all. And it's not strenuous, and it's not 
painful and intense. It's it's just relaxing and gentle, but has all these benefits. So is it only done standing up? I'm just thinking there's an awful lot of people that might have had car accidents, but they're still not at a space where they can move very much. So they're sitting or they're lying. Is this the sort of thing that can be done to actually aid the body to recovery? Absolutely, absolutely. And that that's one of the beauties of it. And in fact, the standing processes I was talking about a moment ago, their originator was so ill when he first started developing that he was doing it lying down. Wow. So he was doing it in bed and the same position positions that we would be holding with our arms he was doing lying on his back in bed and when he felt he had enough energy he did it sitting on his bed yeah and when he felt he had enough energy he did it standing and so uh, and I'm also just about to start a, a new project with uh, Elevate who are an organization down in Shropshire that help with uh, fall prevention with those over 60 so they can either be referred by their GPs or be uh, self-referred in and um, it's a 20-week program that strengthens them and helps with their balance and stability now they have a follow-on program that goes for a further 20 weeks and i'm just uh, uh talking with the organizers of that to actually start coming in and teaching qigong and i'm also going to do some work with their instructors because part of their instruction interestingly is that uh they're encouraged to finish their sessions in those first 20 weeks with some tai chi type movement now they haven't really been instructed in that so i'm going to go in and give them just one very clear practice that they can use and we've got setups so they can be done with people seated people standing and so on mm. and they're still very very beneficial i've even done practices with people in wheelchairs before who have very very limited movement uh, and people who have got injury that gives significant range of movement issues and what we do is we engage the mind so rather than the body having to do it all it's imagine and visualize if your body was doing that how that would look and feel and we find very very quickly that the nervous system starts responding and I've got a beautiful case at the moment of a lady who had a massive shoulder injury uh, and uh, and could barely move her shoulder correctly and she's gone from having hardly any range of movement to being able to get her arm back above her head and move it in all sorts of ways in about a dozen sessions you know so really really quickly and it's just re trained the mind retrained the body but coming from the point of view of staying below a level that's stressful so we we have yeah. the 70 percent line that we don't go beyond yeah it. otherwise yeah the body just goes uh, my sense on that is the body will just clamp down that's right sure yeah, it's, it's like, like if nope. somebody pulls you you pull back yeah whereas if somebody holds out their hand and invites you you're more likely to go lovely so, yeah sure and that's often <laughs> how i see it it's this gentle invitation and you only do as much as you have capacity for yeah. and that's better than trying to either match me or somebody else in the class so we really really impress you stay at that 70 percent point for you so it's a non-competitive oh, totally. even with yourself Sure. way of learning retraining your body in yeah. a way it's, it's being kind and yeah again this is where all the access stuff becomes in beautifully with it yeah how kind is it to me if i do xyz yeah we are busy chatting so much as ben's always doing something else so he was just about while we were off air to tell me about a new thing that he's learned so go ben you tell us what it's all about the abbreviation is mstr mstr i'm it, right i'm writing that down now it stands for mclaughlin scar tissue release and this is a, an absolutely amazing bodywork technique developed by Alistair McLaughlin who for many many years has uh, done uh, soft tissue work done and taught Bowen technique and a number of other things and he started to uh, become aware that there wasn't uh, uh, an effective technique for dealing with scar tissue and this could be scar tissue that's done because of uh, surgery or because of accidents but it also applies to burn scars it also applies to amputation scarring as well so for things like uh, mastectomy uh, and for limb amputation and one of the things that tends to happen is that tissue because of the way the scar works pulls incredibly tight mm. and it, it's described in the training as like the bulldog clip effect so you get this pull on the tissue and then there's a lot of associated tissue that also becomes implicated so uh, if you ever hear Alistair McLaughlin talk about it he mentions a lot that um, uh, cesarean section scars are one of his favorites 
and uh, he had research done on this last year and is, is funding now for more research but uh, they were using ultrasound uh, on the scar tissue to measure the depth of the scar tissue. And Alistair only did a 15-minute treatment on each scar, and the scars reduced in the scar tissue depth after 15 minutes between 30 and 60%. Wow. So a massive change in the scar tissue off just one 15-minute treatment. And it allows all of the collagen fibers within the scar. If you can imagine that in a lot of scars, they're a little bit like you've dropped uh, a series of toothpicks on the floor in that they're, they're just crossed fiber. Yeah. And, you know, you, you'll have seen images on the Internet where somebody's uh, gaffer taped something somewhere and there's just millions of lines of gaffer tape holding the thing still. And, and that's great on one level for uh, emergency repair, but in the long run it can add to other problems. So we regularly see people with like C-section scars who have lower back pain yeah. and have digestive problems. We regularly see people that have had uh, appendix scars and they have either right hip problems or left shoulder problems. And so there's this association to other tissues in the body because of the way that the connective tissue is related yeah. and that by doing scar release work we can deal with areas where there are pain and hypersensitivity in scars, uh, you know, redness and, and where the scar just doesn't look like it's healed very well. It also deals with numbness, loss of sensation. It also, excuse me, helps a lot with uh, any emotional holding that's in the scarring. And, and I was really fortunate on my training that there was a, a, a gentleman who is now a post-operative uh, transgender male and was really kind to allow us to see and work on the scars from the breast removal. And, you know, just the level of emotion that was held there for him mm. and, and how he spoke about how in the, uh, the transgender community, how there are a lot of people that uh, following their surgery have so much both emotional and physical uh, stress bundled up in those scars and, and it was his uh, kind of desire to then work with and support people in that community but just you know I think it's easy to relate uh, and again for, for ladies that have had breast surgery you know whether you know for whatever reason that is you mm. know it could be mastectomy from from cancer diagnosis uh, that there's so much emotion held and often there's issues with range of movement in the shoulders and pain and other things and the scar release work the MSTR has been been shown to make significant improvements in those very quickly but most importantly it's permanent right so once you do it it permanently shifts that that tissue. was going to be one of my questions yeah so i guess that it depends on the individual as to how many sessions would be required absolutely or yeah, do you sure. do you have like a baseline knowing that there would be not really three or it, whatever it's really interesting because you have absolutely no idea how much somebody sure. will respond so uh, i've seen some massive effects from single sessions I've seen uh, people that have had very slight change over two, three, four sessions. And in the fifth session, boom, big change is taking yeah. place. So it, it very much depends on that individual, how their body is, what's tied up in the scar, and, and also how aware of it they are. I mean, there was a, a lady who, again, was on our training that had got a, a, a very large cesarean section scar, basically ran from hip bone to hip bone. And her daughter was now 24, and she'd never looked at or touched the scar. Mm. So that's 24 years of avoiding it. Mm. And this was the first time anyone had actually physically said, well, what does that physically feel like to you when you touch it? Yeah. What do you notice? So sometimes it's about bringing this relationship back to the body for people and allowing them to improve a healthy relationship and knowing that there is a way of changing it. Yeah, bodies fascinate me, and people not wanting to know what's happened to the body that they have fascinates me as really? well. Yeah, me too. The way that they like really totally want to just block it out, but actually it carries you around. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's a bit important, really. It's a bit like ignoring <laughs> the knocking sound on your car, isn't it? It is, you know, isn't it? If you stick yeah. your head in the sand, the, the potential is there's another issue there later yeah. on. Uh, but a lot of the time, you know, we, we do compensate, we do cope, we do get through, but we don't have to struggle. And I think that's one of the, the really important things that the MSTR and, and Alistair's work really offers people is the fact that we don't have to struggle. Uh, I know that in medical circles, they've struggled for a long time to find effective 
scar treatment. Yes. And with the research yeah, that true. Alistair's doing, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if within the next uh, one to two decades, MSTR is a significant part of medical recovery for scars. So this has come out via Bowen. Yes. Just very, very briefly tell us what happens with Bowen, because I know you've done this for a long time yeah, as well. Yeah, sure. Now. So this is uh, eight years now. Uh, so it's a soft tissue uh, manipulation procedure, although uh, Bowen therapists, we still have discussion about how we would term it. <laughs> <laughs> because really what we're doing is we're signaling the connective tissue with a gentle touch. So one of the rules that we explain with people when they come for Bowen is if anything I do is painful, tell me straight away so that I can use less pressure. Right. Because it really is a light touch therapy. And I think people really underestimate how responsive the body is to a gentle touch mm. and how deeply you can change it. And so we tend to do very short sequences of movement movements uh, in a few places on both sides of the body and then we actually leave you in what we call a therapeutic pause for about three to five minutes and allow your body to do stuff that uh, it wants to do to explore and change what's going on with that tissue yeah. and frequently you will see significant improvement without pain without discomfort and with just that sense of feeling lighter feeling straighter I had a lady get off the couch after a first Bowen session earlier this this week and she said it felt like her feet were on the ground properly and hadn't noticed they weren't so one of the things you may not know about ben is that um he plays in a band <laughs> we've got a name now as well oh have you come yeah. on so we're called 10 gins in <laughs> crikey if i had 10 gins these days i think i'd die to be honest well that that's kind of where it came from because when we came up with the name i think that we were about 10 gins in so it was uh i quite like it though actually. yeah it has a ring to it yeah it's written japanese style with a j so it looks good okay <laughs> i like it yeah yeah that connects everything together so um there's um there's always something about health isn't there that's being um talked about and so you were just saying off air that it's breast cancer awareness month that's right yeah sure so throughout october we've got breast cancer awareness month uh, and again with the mstr with the mclaughlin scar tissue release we are highlighting the fact that for uh, for ladies who are uh, post-operative from uh, any kind of uh, reduction mastectomy lumpectomy that we are available to discuss with them and, and support them if they're finding that uh, post-surgically they are having issues because some people their scar tissue is very tight yes as opposed to others it doesn't seem to happen yeah. i just wonder because i your brain i you know does this wonderful thing of go well it could be this it could be that so what would that be that if someone's tissue was way tighter than someone else's it's not just a physical thing i get well i mean part of it uh, is potentially to do with who did the surgery yeah you know, because obviously the the nature of the uh, the cancer in the first place, in, in the case of something like a breast cancer, it's not until the surgeons are actually exploring that they really know the full extent of, of what they're looking at and how much they need to change inside the body and then what's available to close up with and, uh, again, the integrity of that tissue. So for, for some ladies, depending on, on how the surgery is done, they're, they're going to have a tighter finish and also depending on how their body healing process is, depending on how rapid it is, depending on the nutrient density that their body has to be able to form healthy, good connective tissue. And we're not all equal in that no. measure. You know, if we've got a really good diet and, and healthy lifestyle, then how our body heals is different than if we have an unhealthy lifestyle and uh, you know and not good nutrition so so it's variable in that way and yeah there can be a lot of tightness uh, around the scar tissue but that can also extend into necks into shoulders yeah down into hips all the way through into the back you can get people that have issues where they can't move their shoulders properly and so lifting their arms especially in certain directions can be very difficult and uh, you know the the scar tissue work literally allows the body to physically change that I find that fascinating but I've seen other I've seen something similar but not quite as um, profound as you're talking about. Um, but I, I get that the more the people work with this, the more 
that what you're doing is going to grow as well. Yeah, sure. Um, it just fascinates me. It really does. Um, and quickly about the centre, what is happening in Shrewsbury? Because you've mentioned that you're coming up to Chester and North Wales. I'm coming up to Chester and North Wales. Yes. How do that said? You've off, you've often do a clinic, don't you, in Chester? Yeah, I, I've been. I've actually been at the Chester Wellness Centre uh, just on the the south side of Chester for over ten years. Yeah, uh, and so I have a, a clinic there. But I'm going to be looking to increase the amount of work I do there and, and more stuff in North Wales. Um, but after six years of, of running Centre for Integral Health in Shrewsbury, I've decided that it's time for me to move on and do other stuff. So, it, you know, as a growing business, you know, we, we have over 20 registered practitioners. We have over 20 events providers that come in throughout the year, plus other practitioners that use us ad hoc and other services. Um, and I in all honesty, I've realized it's not what I enjoy doing. You know, I, okay. I love the space and I love the people working there, but the administration of that is not really where my gift is. And so what I'm wanting to do and looking to do, and hopefully this is what we're in the progress of doing, is hand it over to ownership for somebody else so that uh, they can help it continue to grow and flourish. I still want to work there. Yeah. I still want to run my clinic in Shrewsbury out of there. But my plan is to gradually reduce my Shrewsbury clinic as I build up more stuff uh, and, and change what I'm doing as, again, you know, the qigong obviously is something i want to do more of and i want to change my approach to clinical work and and while so much of my time and energy goes into running the center that's a challenge to do so so i'm in the process i'm looking for buyers so if you're interested (laughs) in a successful upcoming you know grown six years in a row business down in shrewsbury then then get in contact with me Uh, and you can always find me at the center for integral health at centralhealthshrewsbury.com if you want a website address for that as well (laughs) thank you you. So we're in the final section of Empowerment Hour today. We have five minutes before it is Tracy and Heather coming in with Business Community. And um, yeah, thanks for listening. What can I say? It's been amazing. And uh, Ben, so you've got something that's really interesting to share with everyone about sulfites and wine and things that you can put in it. <laughs> I have to say, so um, for for some of you that know, I'm a big fan of epigenetics and and body signaling. And and I was at their annual conference a couple of weeks ago, and they've just brought out a new product called Sulfite Clear. So this is uh, epigenetics-international.com if you want to go and find this. And it's a product that's got a particular chemical solution in it that's tasteless. And if you put a drop in a glass of wine, three drops in a pint of beer, or six drops in a bottle of wine, will neutralize all the sulfites down to water. So that if you're sulfite sensitive, i.e. you get really bad hangovers from wine or beer, uh, then you can reduce that. And it improves the flavor of the product as well because the sulfites no longer have that weird taste in there. And it completely neutralizes it. So it's a mu- and it's only in a little tiny bottle. So a must for the Christmas party <laughs> because you can just keep it in your handbag. I mean, Not that you're encouraging anyone to go over their limit, are you? Not at all. But I'm going to say that if you do something suffer from alcohol then it's worth getting so that you're not struggling as much with it so so that's one of my top tips for the the season Uh, and the other one is of course if you're not already thinking about boosting your vitamin d levels now is the time to do it we we stopped producing vitamin d uh two weeks ago at the autumn equinox so it doesn't matter how much you're out in the sunshine between now and the end of march next year in the uk you will not produce a drop of vitamin d and if you start supplementing it now you've got a much better level of keeping your levels in a healthy range and much less likelihood of having seasonal affective disorder and getting colds and flus this winter so it's been shown hasn't it that it's better than the flu vaccine to take vitamin d there that that research is uh is there but it's a little bit questionable oh is it so it's uh i i haven't gone full out and gone it's better than a flu vaccine but if you look at the actual research around flu vaccines and look at how effective that is, yeah. it doesn't surprise me that it's easy to extrapolate data that shows that high boosted vitamin D is actually more useful potentially. Cool. So um, last few seconds of the show. Thank you so much for coming in. Denise, always a pleasure. Love to Amazing. See you. And I do look forward to your cheek on coming to Chester. I've I've said this for ages because I've wanted to go to your Sunday outdoor one that you've been doing and never managed it, uh, various reasons, time usually. So if you're in Chester soon, New Year maybe, 
let's see what we can do. So that would be great. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Ben, for being here. As I say, stay tuned. It's Tracy and Heather at the top of the hour with Business Community. As always, a pleasure to be here with you all. Thank you all so very, very, very much. I'm going to leave you with a little bit of Oasis and uh, Wonderwall. How does it get any better than this, everyone? Yay! Thank you. Bye for now.